हेलो गाइस हाउ आर यू आई एम हरदीप सिंह वेलकम बैक टू योर ओन यूट्यूब चैनल आल्स अपडेट्स एंड रीसेंट एग्जाम्स फॉर मोर अपडेट्स रिलेटेड टू रीसेंट आल्स एग्जाम राइटिंग दस टॉपिक्स लिस्टिंग रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट एंड स्पीकिंग क्यू कैट गेस्ट वर्क प्लीज गाइस पार्टिसिपेट इन एवरी डे लिस्टिंग एंड रीडिंग प्रैक्टिस टेस्ट टू अचीव योर डिजायर बैंड स्कोर इन योर एक्चुअल आल्स एग्जाम Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page Alts Updates and Recent Exams. Part 1. You will hear two women talking about house cleaning. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 3. Listen carefully to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 1 to 3. Well, Jill, I'm glad you had a nice holiday. We'll have to try it ourselves sometime. Yes, Kate, you really should. I'll give you a contact number for the hotel we stayed in. Anyway, I must be Oh, I know what I meant to ask you. Sorry, it was about a cleaner. Oh, yes. Yes. We've been talking about getting somebody to come in and help out. You had a cleaner not long ago, didn't you? I thought you said having a cleaner was a waste of money, that you'd never pay somebody to do what you can do perfectly well yourself. Well, yes. <laughs> Maybe. I... But things have changed. Things are really hectic for Greg at work all of a sudden. He's never home till after 8. I end up doing everything. The house looks like such a mess. I never get time to tidy up before I go out to work, and in the evenings I just about manage to cook and wash up. Well, you shouldn't be the one doing everything if you're working as well. That's not fair, is it? I think Greg's just shattered. Oh, to be fair, he's pretty domesticated. We've always pretty much shared the chores. It's just a temporary thing, I think. <laughs> I hope. We're basically both trying to juggle too much. The last thing we want to do at the weekends is start cleaning. We want to relax a bit. It's not because all the neighbors have got a cleaner, is it? Hmm. <laughs> you know me too well. I guess there is a bit of that. I feel like the poor relation when I tell them I do all the cleaning myself. They can't believe I fit in so much. Never worry about what other people think. No. Anyway, one way or another we need a cleaner. Well, as long as it's not too expensive that is. I don't think it's expensive and it's money well spent. We only really stopped having Trisha come in every week because I was off work with the baby so I could do most of it myself. So how much is it? Well, Trisha was 8 pounds an hour. I can't say that's what everyone charges. That isn't bad, is it? It's less than I thought. Oh, well, I think we can run to 8 pounds. How many hours did she do? 4 hours a week. Well, that sounds about right. Can you give me her number then? Oh, sorry, no. She's not around any more. She went back to Wales. I think it was Wales anyway, a couple of months ago. Oh no. That's a shame. Wait a minute though. We've had some leaflets through the door recently. Let me see if I can find one. I put one here by the phone, I'm sure. You now have some time to look at questions 4 to 10.
Now listen to the rest of the conversation and answer questions 4 to 10. Ah, yes, here we are. It's a company. They're called dusters. Dusters? Yes, as in people who dust. You have to phone Abby on... Is that Abby with E-Y? No, it's A-double-B-Y. OK. And it's a, it's a local number, 650-918. 650 -918. OK, got it. They do ironing and can look after your garden too, apparently. Mmm, ironing would be helpful. I loathe ironing. So, do they say how much it is? Yes, it's 9.50 an hour. That's for all the different services. 9.50? A bit more expensive, then. They do a spring clean for £45. So that's one big clean. Do they say how many hours that is? No, it just says spring clean. I guess it's five hours, so it's a bit cheaper than five hours of cleaning would be normally. Yes, probably. That might be a good idea to start off with. You'll like this too, Kate. They can use organic products if you want them to. Oh, yes, I'd prefer that. I don't like using strong chemicals. They're so bad for the environment. OK, I'll give them a call. Thanks for that. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. You will hear the head teacher of a school giving a talk to parents about some new classrooms. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Listen carefully to the first part of the talk and answer questions 11 to 14. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for making it along. I know how busy you all are with term coming to an end. As you know, the aim of this meeting is to show you the plans we've got to add two new classrooms and how that will affect the playground. Now, I've heard that quite a few of you are worried that there'll be hardly any playground left. But I want to reassure you that that's not the case at all. I think there's been quite a lot of uninformed talk going on, and people have started worrying unduly. I certainly hope I can dispel any of your concerns this evening. Firstly, I have a plan of what the school should look like which I'll project onto the screen. The school governors and the developers want to hear your feedback before making final decisions. Your feedback's very important. When I've gone through the plan with you, you can ask questions and we'll discuss those queries in detail. There'll be plenty of time to tell us what you think over the coming weeks. And once the plans are a little more developed, they'll be available online. There'll be a weekly update. And once the actual construction begins, you'll be able to check progress as it happens. Personally, I'm very happy with where we've got to. I knew we had to have the extra space, 
But I must admit, I worried long and hard about what we might have to sacrifice for it. The developers have certainly convinced me that we've made the right decision. You now have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the talk and answer questions 15 to 20. Right, can everyone see the plan now? Good. Let's start at the Balfour Road entrance, since that's where most of you come and go from. The Farley Road entrance and lower playground won't be affected at all. Now... As you come into the top playground, the two new classrooms will be on the right. There'll be a new gate and the steps down will be rebuilt. There'll be a ramp for disabled visitors too. On the plan here, only the parts of the building affected by the plans are shown. I'll explain why the hall is marked on later. So, so as I said... The new classrooms will be to the right of the entrance and, as you can see, will take up very little of the playground space. We feel the Year 6 children need their own area away from the younger children. So, this one on the left of the two rooms will be the new Year 6 classroom. As you can see, there's no direct entrance from the playground. The plan is to include a small entrance area here from the playground for coats and boots and so on. Entrance to the classroom will be from that area. There will also be an additional entrance to the hall from this cloakroom so children will be able to get to the hall from two different directions, from inside the main building and from the new entrance area. I hope that's clear. Now, as you all know, the hall doubles up as the cafeteria at lunchtime. One of the rumours I heard was that we're planning to dispense with the cafeteria and open up a snack bar. I can categorically state that replacing healthy school meals with a snack bar is not remotely in our thoughts. The other new classroom, that's the one with the playground entrance here, is going to be an exciting new venture for us. That's because its principal use will be for the preschool and after-school clubs. More and more parents want that facility outside school hours, and we need a dedicated space to run these activities. I think there were also worries about the nursery school, though I'm not really sure why, to be honest with you. I can tell you now that the whole area on the other side of the main school building will be totally unaffected. The nursery will continue operating as it does now. There will be a couple of smaller constructions, modernisation work really, down here on the other side of the top playground. Cycling into school is getting more and more popular, so we're replacing the old bike sheds with a brand new bicycle bay. There'll be space for 60 bikes. The children's toilets will also be modernised and the children will be able to enter them from inside the school building rather than from the playground as they do now. There'll be brand new staff toilets in that part of the building too, I'm pleased to say. So, I hope that's at least started to allay a few fears. Take a few minutes to look at the plan, but I'll get out of the way. Then I'll answer a few questions if you have any. Does that make sense to you? That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now it turns to part three. You will hear a conversation between a prospective student and a university advisor about applying to enter the university. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. As you listen to the first part of the conversation, answer questions 21 to 23. I'm interested in entering your business administration program, and I'd like some information on how to apply. I'm a little concerned because I've been out of school for a number of years. That could actually work to your advantage. It's possible to get academic credit for work experience if that experience is related to courses in our program. I've been working in business for several years. How would I get academic credit for that? First, you'll need to read the university catalog to see if any of the course descriptions match your specific job experience. For example, if you've worked in accounting, you may be able to get credit for an accounting course. So then what would I do? You would write a summary of your work experience relating it to specific courses we offer. Submit that to the admissions office with a letter from your work supervisor confirming your experience. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 24 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 24 to 30. Would I submit those things at the same time that I apply for admission? That would be the best idea. Have you looked at our course catalogue yet? No, not yet. I guess I should do that soon. Just go to the university website and you'll find it there. Okay. Can you tell me how the admissions process works? Well, first you'll need to fill out an admissions form and submit it. That's on the website as well. Of course, you'll need to make sure you meet all the admissions requirements. How can I know what those are? The best way to understand them is to come to a special session we're having for prospective students next Wednesday evening. We'll explain the process then and go over the requirements and answer any questions you may have. That sounds great. I'd like to attend. Good. It's at 7 o'clock. Just go to the meeting room in the basement of the library. You know where that is, right? Next to the Student Services Center? Yes, that's it. It'll be a really informative session because it'll also give you a chance to meet several of the professors and get more information about them. By the way, did you come by car today? Uh, no, bus, but I'll probably drive on Wednesday. You'll need to get a parking pass then. How do I do that? Can I download one from the website? No, you have to get it in person from the Student Services Center. Just tell them you're here for the meeting at the library. Now, do you think you'd be interested in applying for a part-time job through the university work-study program? I'm considering that. How can I find out what kinds of jobs are offered? You can access the job listings from the computers in the library. Are you planning to study full-time or part-time? I want to be a full-time student. Good. Then you'll qualify for the work-study program. Part-time students aren't eligible. As a full-time student, would I be eligible for a free bus pass? No, unfortunately, we don't have those available for any of our students. However, you can apply for financial assistance to help pay for your books or for your tuition. I'd like to look into that. Do I apply for that at the admissions office? No, that's through us. You'll need to make an appointment with a counselor. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part four. You will hear a lecture about the black bear. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions. The black bear, or Ursus americanus, has a wide range inhabiting forested areas of North America, including Canada, the United States, and parts of northern Mexico. Black bears are omnivores, getting their nutrition from a wide variety of plants and animals. The particular foods any one bear eats depends on what's available in the area where that bear lives as well as on the season of the year. Generally speaking, plant foods make up 90% of the bear's diet. The rest of its meals consist of animal foods, such as insects and fish. Bears have a relatively long gestation period. Mating takes place in the spring or early summer, but bear cubs aren't born until the following winter. Usually, two cubs are born at a time although some litters may have as many as five cubs. Bear cubs are dependent on their mother and may stay with her for close to two years. Wild black bears can live as long as 25 years. They've lived for as long as 30 years or more in captivity. Much of the black bear's range coincides with the range of its close cousin, the grizzly bear. Although these bears are somewhat similar in appearance and habits, it isn't difficult to tell the difference between them. Colour isn't necessarily a distinguishing characteristic, as both species of bears occur in a range of colours from almost blonde to dark brown or black. Many black bears, however, have a patch of fur on their chests that's lighter in colour than the rest of their fur. Grizzly bears don't have this patch. Size isn't always a distinguishing feature either, although grizzly bears are usually heavier with an average weight of 225 kilos. Black bears average 140 kilos in weight. Grizzly bears spend time digging in the ground for roots and tubers that make up part of their diet. The large muscles they need for this give them a distinct shoulder hump. This hump is absent in black bears, which don't do the same kind of digging. The shape of the face and ears is also different in each species of bear. Grizzly bears have a depression between the eyes and nose and short round ears. Black bears, on the other hand, have a straighter profile and longer, more pointed ears. Grizzly bears are known for their fearsome long, sharp claws. Black bears have shorter claws, which are better suited for climbing trees. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So guys, don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing as topics, listening, reading, practice test and speaking, you cut guesswork. Please guys participate in everyday new IELTS listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam. For more IELTS material, visit my official website www.ielsupdatesandrecentexams.com. The link is given below in the description. If you need PDF files of latest IELTS material, then please join my Telegram channel. So guys, please write your score below the comment section. Again, thanks for listening. God bless you all guys. Stay tuned. Stay safe.